If you're here, it means that you want to learn how to work with the Twitch API using Node.js. And I mean, who wouldn't, right? It's really cool. Uh, games are cool and coding's cool. So let's hop right into it. So one of the first things you need to do is you need to go and get a client ID and a client secret from Twitch. So you need to go in and sign up for their Twitch developers uh, account. So you just type in like Twitch dev, go there, sign up get your stuff um, they'll ask you to create an app just create an app um, and get the stuff that you need and so once you do that then you're gonna be ready to start coding so one of the first things that we want to do is I open up PowerShell here and we want to make a directory and so you're just gonna type in mkdir or make directory okay and then give it a name and so we'll call this um, like YouTube node so let's create our directory. Next thing you want to do is CD into that. Okay, and so inside of here, you want to make sure that you install and uh, all your modules that you're gonna need, your, create your server.js and go ahead and open up uh, all of that inside of code, uh, VS Code. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're just going to say echo like this, and we're gonna create a file called server.js. And just give it the default. And so that's gonna create it. Then you're gonna do npm init. This is gonna initialize the node package. Um, manager, just go ahead and hit enter for everything. It doesn't matter. Okay, at the end, type yes. Great. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to make sure that we're gonna install, um, this is the dot environment so it's npm install.env and we also believe that's all the packages we need for this so you can just type in um, code dot and it should open it up in visual studio code as you can see here so make sure that you've got visual studio code installed all right so here we are here's our server js and what we want to do is we first want to initialize uh, or require the packages. So the first package that we're going to require is we're just going to type in require. This is our, for our .env. And what env is, it's environment variables so that we can, um, well, mostly so that I don't have to show my client secret and stuff like that. So we're going to say require, and it wants to do... Uh, intelligence there so require.env um, dot config like this so that's going to require that and then we also want to require a uh, request so we're going to type in const request is equal to require and then you just type in request like that so this has got our requires out of the way And now we can get into some of the coding. And so you're going to want to go ahead and set up your <clears throat> .env file. So go ahead over here, do new file, and just call it .env. And this is your environment variables. And in here, you can create stuff. We'll say like client underscore ID. We'll do client underscore secret um, and then you can actually do like URL so you can do like the get token because you will need an OAuth token and you can do like get games and that's what we're going to use for this one um, these are going to be the URLs so let me put these in here and then I will be right back and we'll go ahead function and this function is going to be a post request to twitch so that we can get an access token or an OAuth token that will be used to make other calls. And so you go ahead and you're gonna type const, and I'm just gonna call this one get token, that's the name of the function, hit equals, and then for the, we're gonna give it two parameters, which are gonna be the URL, and then we're gonna do callback so that we have a callback function. Okay, type it in like so. <clears throat> All right, and so inside of here, uh, the first thing we're going to do inside this is we're going to create what's called const options. And this is what we're going to pass to the post request. And so we're going to do URL. And this is really where the process, the environments come in handy. So you can type URL and then process 
dot emv dot um, get token. And so that is the actual get token URL. Okay, we're gonna tell it JSON uh, truth. This way it go ahead, it goes ahead and parses it into JSON. And then you, for this request, you've got to create the body. And so after body, give it some curly braces. And inside of here is where you're gonna need to put your client um, underscore ID. And so we're gonna go ahead and set this to the process EMV um, for client ID. And then you're gonna need your client secret. So like this, client secret and set it to process.env.client underscore secret. And then lastly, inside of this body, you're gonna to need to um, put grant type. You do have to put this in there and it is client underscore credentials. This is required. So go ahead, go down here, make sure you get all of your stuff nice and pretty. And now we're actually gonna do the request. So you just type in request.post Okay, and inside of here, and then you gotta do some uh, braces. Inside here, you're gonna type in options. So these are the options that we just created. Uh, hit it with a comma, just a couple other bra braces here. And we're gonna put air for error, res for response, and body for the body of the response. And you're gonna do equal like this, give it some curly braces. And inside of here we're gonna say if, so this is an if statement, error. We want to know why we're getting an error. So we're gonna say return uh, console.log error for funsies. And then after that, so if it errors out, it you know it'll it'll give us an error or a reason. We're just gonna say console.log. Um, inside of this, we're gonna say status. And then that, okay. And then we're gonna say res.statuscode. So this is actually gonna give us um, <clears throat> our status code, so like a 401, 404. It makes it easier to uh, troubleshoot. And then we're gonna say console.log, and we want to see the body of this request. We want to see the body that's returned to us. Um, and then for our callback, which we'll use later, just go ahead and type in callback res. So that'll be our callback response. Make sure that your, you've got all of your syntax correct here. And so this is actually going to make, this is the function that we're gonna use to make the request to get our OAuth. And so now we need to have a request to where, or I mean a function so that we can actually use it and so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually call, we're not going to make another function, we're going to call this function. So we're just going to say get token, okay, set it up here. And then we need to call the process.getMV process .env, uh, get underscore token. So this is that URL that we're wanting and then after that, you're going to go ahead and hit you a comma here, create another uh, set of braces. This is so that you can actually use the callback function. Go ahead, set it up like that. We also have some curly braces that we need here. Make it look nice and pretty. And so <clears throat> in here, what we need to do is we're actually just going to we're just going to console.log um, the res so that we can see what it looks like. So now I'll switch over to uh, PowerShell and we're actually going to run this. And so you're just going to say node uh, server.js and then it's like, hey, you got an error and it's like, why? And it's like, cannot find the module request. Um, so apparently uh, it didn't, we forgot to install it. So just say npm install request and this will fix it all right so now everything's installed so now we can actually do node server date js and as you can see here we are getting a response and this is the entire response that we're getting 
this has a lot of stuff, but it's a lot of stuff that we don't need. So what we need to do is we need to go back over and figure out how we're going to get it to where we just where we just get what it is that we're looking for. And so we can actually say res.body in here inside of here inside of this um, console.log here. We can say res.body and this is actually going to give us the body of the return. And so if we go in here you can see it's a lot less here and so it actually gives us the access token. Um, and if you'll notice in my code, let me go. If you notice in my code, I've actually got this already going up here. So if there's nothing happening inside this get token right here, if there's, if there's nothing happening in it, we're actually going to see that already. And so you can actually see um, <clears throat> what the access token is, the status code, and everything like that. So if we go back to Visual Studio Code here. We want to make sure that we're actually using this. And so what we want to do is we're going to initialize a variable outside of this function. And I'm just going to call it AT. I'm going to put it equal to nothing at this current moment. And so inside of the get token function, we're actually going to set AT equal to, and we're going to say res.body.access token. like that. And so that is going to set um, the AT variable equal to uh, that what we need it to be equal to, which is the access token. And we're actually going to return it. So we're just going to say return AT. Okay, so if I go out here and I say console.log, I'm actually going to set a set. I'm going to set a timeout on this, and we'll talk about this timeout here in a minute. So I'm going to set a timeout here on this, so that it doesn't uh, go before our other um, our other stuff. So we're going to set a timeout, and <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to say console.log. AT like that and then we got to give it a timer we're gonna say 1000 which will be equal to 1000 uh, which is equal to one second so do not forget your curly braces here which you have to have it's bad coding on my part so now we're gonna go in and run it again okay and as you can see it waited one second and now down here we can see that our variable has been given the access token. So let's go back over here and we're actually going to take this out because we don't need this. But it was a way to see it. So the next thing we need to do is we need to set up our function so that we can get the top games list. And so for this we're going to just call it, we're just going to say constant and we're going to um, call it get games equal to and then inside here we've got to enter some parameters so we're going to say url this is going to pass the url we've actually got to pass that access token that we just created and then we're also going to give it a call back in case we want to do anything with it later okay so inside here we also need um options so we're going to say const for constant and we're going to call these game options this you do need this for your request this one is smaller than the other one, so we're going to say URL, and we can say process.env.get underscore games, and this is the get games um, URL that's given in the Twitch API documentation um, that we've also put in our environmental variables. And we're going to give the method of get and then uh, we need headers. So for this one, we actually need headers instead of body. And for our headers, we're going to give it a client client dash ID, like so. And this is going to be equal to um, the process .environment .client ID that we used earlier. And then we need um, a header for authorization. And so for authorization, it needs to be like that. 
And then inside of here, you're going to say um, bearer, like this, like bearer. And you want to give it a space before your last um, apostrophe, I guess, or your single quote. And you're going to space access token. Okay, put that here. And so that's the, the options that we need for this. And now we're going to say request.get. And this is a get request as to opposed to having a post request. And so you're going to say request.get, and you're going to pass in the parameters game options. You're going to give it a comma. And inside here for the callback function, you're going to say air res and body. Give it a space here, make it look nice and clean. Boom, put in some curly braces. And so <clears throat> inside of here, we're going to give it another, you know, error here. So if error, you know, we want to know the error. So console dot, um, return console dot log error. You know, we want to see if there's any errors. And we do get that uh, if there's any issue. And now we want to say console dot log. And, you know, we're going to put in some stuff so that, you know, like we did earlier, so that we can make sure that we're doing some troubleshooting if we have any issues. And that's going to be the status because we want to see what that status is going to be, that status code. Um, you know, it could be like you got an invalid OAuth to token or the OAuth, OAuth token is missing. There's a lot of different things it can be. And we want to make sure that we have that. And so it's just going to be res.status code again. Okay, like so. And then we're going to say console.log. And inside of this, we're going to say json.parse. Um, and we're going to say body. And this body is going to refer to the body that we got earlier. Okay, make sure you got everything ready to rock and roll. Okay, and then down here, we're going to do. Now, this is where that set timeout comes in handy. We're going to say set timeout. And what this does is, is, if you're not familiar with Node, is that Node wants to run everything all at once. And so this is actually telling the system, wait a little bit and then run it. And this is to make sure that we have everything initialized. So go ahead and do your set timeout like this. You know, Put you in some good stuff here. And inside of here, we're just going to say, um, we're going to call the get games function and then we're going to type in uh, process.mv dot uh, get games that's our get games uh, variable and we're going to say at or get games um, URL hit at that's our access token variable and then we need to do the respon uh, response. This is for the callback here in case we want to use it later. And inside of here, we're not actually going to do anything. And then go down here, hit a comma, and put it down to 1,000. That's for one second. And so this is actually going to output um, the games inside of a JSON. Now, if you noticed earlier, I didn't use json.parse when we were initially looking at the body or the response from our first request. The reason for that is because I put json is pretty much equal to true right here. Um, for this one, though, I didn't, and so I just used json.parse um, to parse that body. So make sure you got everything saved, and let's go ahead and run it, and we should see a list of games. And then there we go. So we can see right now that the number one game is ID is just chatting. Second is League of Legends. Maybe they're doing Worlds at this point. I don't know. Um, Mafia is number three, which is kind of weird. Dota, Among Us, Grand Theft Auto is still pretty high. You know, these are kind of... This is funny. But anyway... That's the top games. And so now that you've done this, you can actually, you know, take this data and put it into 
Uh, like if you wanted to do an, a, a web app using Express, if you wanted to create a mobile application using React Native, you can do this with a lot. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been really fun to learn to work with the Twitch API, um, to actually get back into coding. And I hope you have found this valuable and that you'll stick around for some more coding that's going to probably happen hopefully in this soon. Thanks for watching.